Hello and welcome back to Wellington Volumes Reactions YouTube channel. My name is Brian, I work for WVA. What I want to do today is I want to take you through how to make a video about people returning to your centre after the lockdown who might be nervous, confused, scared. So this is how you can guide them through the journey. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the building that we're based in, the Gateway, which is in Warrington Town Centre, and we'll show you some of the things that we've did, some of the changes that we've made, and some of the things that people need to think about to reassure them or to prepare them for coming back to services. I've did all this on my phone because I wanted to try and make it as easy as possible, so the editing isn't going to be amazing, it's certainly not going to be Oscar worthy, but I wanted to hopefully show how easy it can be for you guys to make a video. You, can, you could possibly even do it live, so you might want to do it on Facebook Live or film it, edit it like I've done, put it on YouTube or indeed share it on Facebook. Whatever way you think your people will find it, that's the best way to do it. It's get that information to as many people as possible. So, let's crack on. I'm currently at the very entrance of the gateway, which starts literally on the pavement. The pavement behind me, Warrington Town Hall. The reason I've started here is because this is where our journey begins. This is where our users start. When they come in, first thing they see is hand sanitizing stations, which is a hand rub information sign, and our what is becoming increasingly iconic green and white stripy signage. We've also created uh, a keep left system. So what we do is we've got arrows going up, and arrows going down, so we're trying to encourage everybody to keep left. That's been Warrington Town Centre's mantra of everybody keep left as much as they can. Part of the thinking around all of this is what do people see? Where are the touch points? Where are the challenges that they reach when they get into the building? So let's head inside. I've now made it as far inside. I have my mask on because that's going to be potentially the expectation of your building. It's thinking about what do they need to think about and what does it look like when they get there? So if everybody that needs to be in the building is wearing a mask, then in your video, you should be wearing one too. One of the things to think about as well is what structural changes might have happened. So if you haven't been in the gateway for a while, what you might discover is that a reception has been splash guarded with this very cool glass screen. It's just to kind of say, don't get a massive shock when you come in, it will look different but that's okay and this is why it's there. If you need to explain why something's there because you think that's going to reassure people better, that's the way to do it. Let's go further in. Once you're in the building, you might want to explain how things are different. So where I'm standing now is, used to be a corridor. It used to be a walkway, that door over there. It's now been entirely blocked off and we've repurposed how the cafe area works. The reason for that is that we've had to create a more effective one-way system. So what we now ask people to do is walk through that way and come this way down there. I wanted to point out these signs because one thing that we've upped completely is the cleaning game in the building. Um, so it could be that if that's something you think will reassure people, then it's something worth including just to be able to say, this is how we clean, this is when we clean just to kind of make it feel a bit nicer for people. Depending on how your system works, depending on how your building operates, you might have had to create whole new systems around things like toilets. So we've encouraged to limit the amount of people in washrooms. We've also tried to create better flow and better system within our spaces. I'm not going to take you into the ladies, I'll take you into the gents because it feels a little bit more appropriate to do so. Inside, what we've done is we've taken out every second cubicle. We've did this in both toilets. So we've got, we numbered them. We've, so we've closed one and three, opened two and four. And the reason we did that in this space was because we've allowed our urinal to be open and it's the furthest away we could make it from that cubicle. We've given the sinks numbers that correlate to, um, especially in the ladies, the sinks and the cubicles match. The gents, not so much. It was a slightly different system here. But what we've had to do is take out that centre sink, we've just blocked it visually um, with the bin. But we've just take, tried to kind of create enough distance. Theoretically, if three people do end up in here, there's also three toilets. Two sinks, one person will just have to queue. We opted not to put anything on the floor, but 
toilets can be a, an antagonistic place for people anyway. And if you can reassure them that A, there's all the cleaning that goes on, but also this is how the toilet's working. It makes make it a little bit easier and a little bit softer for people coming in a little bit less anxious. You may have made it all the way through the different parts of the building. So you've got your entryway, you've got your any structural changes, you've got elements of building flow, uh, you've got toilet things. Then you get to being in the space that you're in to do the stuff that you're doing. A lot of what we've just seen is elements of the preamble. It's what can you tell people in advance? There'll be things that you'll have to pre-warn people about. You'll need to tell them that you'll collect test and trace information. You'll need to tell them about the, your system and process around masks, what they need to bring with them, what they don't need to bring with them. If you have a system about you're trying to minimise the amount of personal belongings or external um, contaminant or external material that's coming in. So if you're a craft group, for example, do they bring their own projects or do you discourage them from bringing their own projects, however that might work. The same with sports clubs and their kit, etc. Telling people that they can't shower in the, in the centre, etc. One of the big reasons uh, for doing this in this way is because you know your people and you know how to talk to them. And if you don't know your people, then this is a good chance for you to show off how good you are at stuff. So anybody that knows me, has potentially met me in the gate room before and has seen a very subtle, very quick glimpse of some of the changes that we've made within the building. Um, and therefore can, and therefore if this was a proper video about welcome to the gateway, then you'd be hopefully a bit reassured about what's happening. If you haven't known me and you're about to enter into my service for the first time, because lots of people will suddenly be accessing services that they may have never thought about before, especially in our mental health and well-being, then it's a reassuring face that, oh, I'm about to meet that person there. And, oh, they seemed nice. And that whole stranger meeting barrier, that anxiety is potentially reduced because they've heard your voice, they've seen your face, they've seen your face move on a video. And it just is a, a bit more of a friendly introduction. We've got a whole bunch of resources about all of this stuff on our website, which is behind me, but potentially backwards, um, www.warringtonva.org.uk. If you're on a mobile device, follow the support for groups tab and you'll find all the COVID information. If you're on a desktop, again, you can find it through support for groups, but it's also on our main slider. We are hopefully going to expand our YouTube channel uh, with many more videos about funding and some exciting training sessions and briefing sessions and a whole bunch of new stuff. So hit the subscribe button. Um, we'd love to have you along with us on the journey. Um, and you can also hit the bell button to be notified of when we upload new videos. I can't promise you when that's going to happen, but hopefully soon we will have some stuff, even just documenting our adventures, because um, we do some fun stuff. So it would be nice to bring you along for the ride. So thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, you're a legend, and I very much appreciate it. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.